karma is the act that you perform mm -hmm. so when you perform an act you have created a consequence we learn about life through questions how do we manage that in a relationship can it also affect the circumstances are they able to really understand any why all these three things are linked together so what do we do of social media to answer some of these mr praveen mankar founder of pratibhim charitable trust brings to you face to face this week we are talking about karma in life many times questions cross our mind what ever is happening in my life why is it happening jo kuch hota hai mere sath hi aisa kyun hota hai ya kisi aur ke sath why do things happen the way they happen so sir i would like to ask you first a very fundamental question what is the difference between karm and karma <laughs> the difference is in semantics you must understand that the basis of all these terminologies is sanskrit sanskrit has two concepts in phonetics one is the half syllable and one is the full syllable so you can say ma and ma or ta and ta so when you say the short syllable it's called halant hmm. and when you say the full then it is the halant plus the akshar hmm. so it's a complete pronunciation it's a complete pronunciation so it is karma the ma is full it's not karm hmm. so when you say karm it is the north indian way of pronouncing shortening the sound karm when you say karma that's the correct sanskrit pronunciation and when you say karma that is the english distortion because the a is added after the k a r m so the way the West, western world started pronouncing karma is karma mm. so essentially there is no difference between karm karma and karma so is there something like uh, good karm and bad karm sure good and bad are human concepts so what is good for you may not be good for me or what is good for me may not be good for you and essentially you must understand what is karma first before you understand the good and bad part of it karma is a simple law of cause and effect mm. in scientific terminology it's newton's third law of motion every action has equal and opposite reaction. reaction if you understand this much you have understood the law of karma it's also the law of reap as you sow so. you can't plant a coconut seed and expect a mango fruit mm. if you have planted a particular seed that's the crop that you will get it's the universal law of cause and effect karma is simply laws and cause and effect now when you say karma mm. if you um talk in terms of the grammar the sanskrit grammar karma is an act that is performed the literal translation of the word karma is the act that you perform mm -hmm. so when you perform an act you have created a consequence okay yeah i took atta put water in it and kneaded it into a dough mm. the atta has become a dough mm. the act of kneading converted the atta into a dough. dough so i did the karma the act the performance which produced a consequence which is a dough if i don't break up the dough into smaller balls and roll it into a roti and roast the roti the dough will become hard unrollable and then it's a waste or i have to reknead it or maybe it gets fermented so i did half the job of kneading the dough but did not convert it into a roti i did half the karma i got the dough which is an appropriate quality and quantity but i did not convert it into the roti so i did not get the benefit of taking the initial raw material to and take it take it to its logical conclusion of making the roti so karma is the action karma i performed an action for which there is a consequence now having created the roti the roti helps me fill my stomach it becomes my food it helps me fill my stomach so making a roti is a good karma 
leaving it at the dough stage and not converting it to roti is a waste <laughs> yeah, of okay. wheat flour. It's a bad karma. Many times people feel or we observe also that there are people who are doing good for others or doing are good individuals. But still they tend to suffer. They have a lot of problems in their lives. And then you like people say that, you know, God loves such people. And so he puts them, he's trying to test them and things like that. There's so many theories which come up. Yeah, people but say, why this is happening in my life? My life I have yeah, been a good, yeah, person. good person. Or even others comment that, oh, he's such a the nice person. person. I wonder why, why he's suffering exactly. so much. Exactly, yeah, that's so, the question. So, that's again a logical question. Now, here you have added a dimension of time, which is a subtle dimension. You have not explicitly stated hmm. the time factor. But when you say, why this is happening in my life, you have inadvertently brought in the concept of something I have done in the past for which I am reaping the harvest today. The harvest is unfortunately unpleasant. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I am questioning, why did I reap this harvest? I have forgotten what I did in the past. So, there is a concept of time. When I say time, there is a concept of memory. Okay. What happened 10 years ago, what happened 20 years ago is faded in your memory. What happened yesterday, probably you remember. What happened one week ago, fair chance you will still remember, but it will be hazy, it will not be as accurate. If you are 85 today, what happened 80 years ago in your life? There is no way you remember. Maybe the memory is completely lost. Now, if I say what happened to you 200 years ago, you will say I was not existing. Hmm. You are not existing in this form. physical form. But you, the entity, was existing. Life, your life was existing, your life form was different. Now, this is difficult for people to understand. For them, life is this body and end of the story. Hmm. When you say this body and end of the story, you are talking of the form. Yeah, like people say, no, uh -huh. we have only one life. We have only one life. And we want to live this life. So, my so, form is over. But you have one life in a particular form. Oh, okay. They don't complete the sentence when they say, I have only one life. You have one life in this form. Mm. But this life continues in a different form. So, whatever continues in a different form is like carrying forward your debits and credits into that form. You have done good things, you get the credits in the next form. You have done bad things, you get the debits in the next form. So, the credit and debit adjustments keep happening from form to form. So, is this what you call a karmic cycle? That is the karmic cycle, yes. Okay. And as long as you have these imbalances, debit and credit imbalances, if you understand a little bit of accounts, there is a ledger. Hmm. There is a book of accounts and there is a ledger. So, if I am dealing with five people, hmm. then my book of accounts has five ledger accounts. Maybe you are one of them and there are four other people in my book of accounts. Each person has a page. Okay. From you I have borrowed something, so I owe you something. With the other four people, I have given them something, so they owe me okay. something. Okay. So I have one debit account because I owe you and one and four credit accounts because they owe me something. Now let us imagine at the end of the financial year, there is no change in status. Mm. You still owe me and I still owe them. Mm. So it'll Do my forward. accounts get cancelled? No. Mm, they don't. They get carried forward to the next year. Now, what is true in a financial year mm. is true in a lifetime. Whatever accounts are unsettled in this lifetime, they get an opportunity to square them off in another lifetime. That's a wonderful... That's, uh, that's your karmic cycle. It's a wonderful way of explaining yeah. that. Yeah. Now, Next year, in the financial situation, do I deal with only these five people? Not necessarily. I may have another five accounts added to my book of accounts. I may lend somebody something. I may borrow something from somebody. So, instead of these five people, now I have ten people. Mm. So, my burdens have increased in the subsequent financial year. Because instead of dealing with five accounts, now I am dealing with ten accounts. So, this kind of also answers a question that many times you feel that, uh, very unrelated people or, or some place where you may not have been or you you ought not to be there but you are there and you do something for that person yes and then you realize like 
you when you think of it later on you say what was i doing there actually and then you know exactly you just, yeah so exactly. this is some kind of a credit debit probably that so you, it is the chartered accountant who makes you do certain do things without you understanding why you are you doing this absolutely yeah okay. that answer why why am i paying yeah. this particular tax you may not be a finance man and you may not understand why you are paying a particular um, tax to the government mm. but the ca says you must pay this mm. and you pay now why have you paid that you need not know mm. who knows the chartered accountant knows so in life the chartered accountant is up there up there means somewhere yeah. in the universe who is monitoring your people call that chartered accountant as god so god keeps your accounts he knows where is the debit where is the credit so if i have borrowed money from you and both of us transit from this body into another body he makes sure that we meet somewhere which gives me an opportunity to pay you back, back. now when i am reluctant to pay you back and i don't pay you back we again transit to another life form which is the okay. third life and again the situation is created where you and i meet again i have the opportunity of squaring the account the more i delay squaring the account or in another lifetime i don't remember that i have borrowed money from you absolutely so i feel that you have now borrowed money from me and there is injustice i deserve the money from and i hound you wapas karo in the process i am maintaining the distortion that happened two lifetimes ago so this imbalance will keep continuing till the time i relent and say okay probably i owed you somewhere something in the past and you took took it from me this time no hard burn no issue that is the time the gets account squared. gets squared and i am free from the attachment to your ledger account and therefore we say i am free therefore we say i am liberated when i am liberated from all the accounts my soul is liberated mm -hmm. and then you say i am in moksha or nirvana okay so in pure financial terms these are debit and credit imbalances <laughs> wonderfully explained <laughs> i would say that yeah so then another question that comes in the minds of people is you partly answered this question already is that uh, why should i keep doing good in this life uh, form i would say um, how does it really help again good Sunday and bad are relative terminologies mm -hmm. let me since you have raised this point twice let me give you a small example mm. that i construct a house have i done good or bad obviously i did good, good i thing. constructed a house now that house is infested with white ants termites and i see the white ant mud hills on the ceiling so what is my natural reaction my natural reaction is my house is being destroyed by these white ants so i call pest control kill all of them get these pests out of the out of my system now i am giving instructions to the pest control people that these white ants are destroying my house get rid of them hmm. mr and mrs white ant are sitting on the sofa looking at me and the pest control guy and hearing our conversation so mr white ant tells mrs white ant look at this rascal this human being he is planning to destroy our house mm. we have built it with so much of love so much of effort so much of time we have constructed this house in which we are living happily and this human being is now planning to destroy my house so who is right now this is not the end of the story while this ant and human being story is going on somebody up there is watching and he is telling his wife mrs god look at these funny creatures one creature is the human being other creature is the white ant both of them destroyed my earth to build their house <laughs> and both are fighting this is my house and this is my house so right and wrong are relative in their place the white ant is also right in his place the human being is also right and in his place god is also right, god is also right. so right and wrong are relative terminologies but then does that mean i mean the human being anyway has to get rid of that ant sure that's your dharma now you come to another word which is rhyming with karma karma is what you do dharma is what you are supposed, supposed to, to do. do okay you are born 
Every species is born for self-preservation and self-propagation. Every species. That's true. Hmm? So, you are protecting yourself, you are protecting your house, you are protecting your property, you are protecting your family. That's your dharma. Keep doing your dharma. Nobody stops you from doing dharma. When you get into the position of judgment that I am right and they are wrong, that's where the trouble starts. Hmm. It's, a, it's a very <laughs> difficult topic to really... It's you know? a connected topic. Yeah. The problem is we, we look at the dots in isolation. Yeah. We don't connect hmm. the dots. The minute you start connecting the dots, then that white ant is also my brother. He's mm. also a life form. I'm also a life form. He's also a child of God. I'm also a child of God. That makes both of us brothers. I think that also explains why I see a lot of people, if they find insects or if they find some, you know, this thing in the house, they pick them up on leaves or something and just drop them by somewhere. They don't kill them. Correct. So that's also there's not lot a of bad logic. idea. There's a yeah. lot of logic in that. But again, if you talk about quantum physics, if you talk about vibrations, why do some life forms trouble the human being and why do some life forms don't trouble the human being? For example, a mosquito. Hmm. In the same family, a mosquito bites a human being yes. and doesn't bite there's another, another human, human being. Yeah, that's, that I've seen. So, yes. a mosquito is troubling one human being and not troubling another human being. So, what is the difference? The difference is vibrations. That person whom the mosquito doesn't bite, his vibrations and the vibrations of the mosquito are in sync, in harmony. And therefore, the mosquito doesn't bite that human being. The mosquito that bites the human being, their vibrations are not in sync. And therefore, the mosquito is troublesome for this human being. So, the whole subject is synchronizing your vibrations with the vibrations of the universe thereby minimizing your troubles. How to synchronize your vibrations? There are techniques. There are yogic techniques. There are breathing techniques. There are meditational techniques. Various techniques. Take your pick. Lots to take away and lots to think about. So let's try and do all, the, all good that's possible in our, this life form and probably hope to being a better human being as we go along. If you have some questions about life, please connect with us. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon for weekly updates.